Hey SolidWorks users, with the recent release of the latest version of SolidWorks, we thought we'd take a deep dive into a new and very useful feature, Bounding Box. The Bounding Box is a piece of reference geometry that can be found in SolidWorks 2018 or later, and it really comes in handy when you want to take length, width, and thickness measurements of your part or parts. Let's use this awesome airplane model to fly through how to add a bounding box to a part. And we'll also be running through the different bounding box options, as well as a quick real-world example of how the bounding box could come in handy for you on future projects. To add a bounding box to the model, navigate to Insert, Reference Geometry, Bounding Box. Let's familiarize ourselves with the Bounding Box Properties Manager. Here you have a few options. You can set up the box as either a best fit or using a custom reference face or plane. The best fit option calculates the smallest volume box the part can fit and orients the bounding box accordingly. For now, let's leave the best fit option selected. You also have the option to include bodies that are hidden as well as any surface bodies you have in the part. So a bounding box has the ability to include multi-body parts in the box. Let's click the green check mark to create a best fit bounding box. With the box created, as you can see, it doesn't appear at the bottom of the history tree. Scroll up to just below the origin and here you'll find the bounding box feature. Now you have a few options to display the bounding box measurements. One is to simply hover over the bounding box feature in the history tree and the length, width, thickness, and volume measurements will be displayed. Alternatively, you can navigate to File, Properties, and in the Configuration Specific tab, you'll see the same measurements displayed. In either case, you can also control the precision of the values or how many decimal places they run out to. This is controlled in Tools, Options, and under the Document Properties tab, you'll find the Units section. Let's change the decimals to the nearest ten thousandths of an inch and click OK. Now if you display the bounding box dimensions, you can see they are now displayed at the higher precision. We can also re-enter the bounding box feature to edit its options. Right click on the bounding box in the history tree and click on the symbol to edit the feature. Let's just quickly run through the option to use a custom plane instead of the best fit option. As you can see, here you can either select a planar face, which is part of your model, or you can select a reference plane, such as the top plane as I've done here. Either way, SolidWorks makes one of the faces of the bounding box parallel to the reference face you select, and then it calculates the smallest volume bounding box from there. So let's go back to the best fit option and exit the feature. So how exactly does this new piece of reference geometry come in handy in the real world? I can see many users taking advantage of this tool for calculating packaging size for parts, and I'll definitely be using this tool to scale models to fit within the minimum build volume of the 3D printers I operate. In this case, I want to print this GB model on an SLA machine with about a 6 inch by 6 inch by 6 inch print volume. And before the development of the bounding box feature, in order to take bounding box measurements of parts, I'd either use the measure tool, or for very organic parts like this, I'd create multiple box sketches coincident or tangent to the outer edges of the part, and manually take measurements from there. Now, the new and much quicker workflow I use is to create the bounding box, hover over the feature in the history tree to note the largest dimension, in this case, it's the length dimension or wingspan of 24.9364 inches. And then I can enter the scaling operation to do a uniform scale around the origin. Entering the formula 6 divided by 24.9364. And after scaling, let's check out the updated bounding box dimensions to double check our work. And there you have it, SolidWorks users, a very simple but useful tool that can now be part of your SolidWorks tool belt. If you're interested in downloading the SolidWorks part model used in this tutorial, check out the video description below. And as always, thanks for watching.